So uh, basically what, what we've been doing here is, is approaching how we're going to uh, talk about things in quantum mechanics. And so I think it's kind of cool to see what the, what the similarities will be here. So just this is a bit of a preview of how we're going to see things written here in a few weeks. So when we take the... Um, when we combine a row and column vector... If you think about like um, delta x dot delta x in normal like kinematics, that's exactly what we're doing. We have delta x delta y delta z dotted with that same thing. So this is simply a dot product. So when we combine a row and a column vector, We can call that a dot, a dot product, or the more proper term for this, the, the word that we're going to be using now, is inner product. And I'm not going to quote that because that's actually the proper term that we use for it. So when you take a vector dotted with, sorry, a, a column vector dotted with a row vector, we have an inner product. So really, that means that ds squared is simply an inner product. And that's why I took the time to kind of go through that whole train of operations that we were doing, the um, dx mu lower, gamma, eta, gamma transpose, dx mu upper. That's exactly what, 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 we're end up, what we end up finding. No matter how we uh, combine these, you still end up taking a, a column vector with a row vector and getting out that single scalar invariant. By the way, that's, that's the important part of this. So it spits out a scalar quantity, which that's that scalar quantity, the space-time separation. And now let's see exactly how that works here. We have, um, so for normal everyday space, we just have the dot product. You take that with that. Now, really what we're doing in 3D space, we're taking... Uh, uh, one by three row, row uh, vector times a one, one, one identity matrix times this. So it's really delta x row vector times identity times delta x. And that would be whatever the length squared of that thing is in the, the three by three rod example. So that's exactly what a uh, inner product is. It's a dot product, so that just gives you out, Ix actually properly, gives you out a, still a column vector times a row vector. So in 4D space, it looks very similar, except now the way we write that is ds squared equals, d, uh, sorry, dx, remember, mu upper, eta, dx mu lower. Okay, so this really is just an a, a inner product, though. It's this guy, which is still a column vector, times a row vector. So we still have... Uh, we still have a scalar output here. And specifically, I, I'm going to do two things here. Now, if you want to write it in the quantum mechanics style... And this is kind of fun. So this exact quantity here, we're going to see written slightly differently in quantum. And so what we're going to see here, instead of dx mu, we're just going to call that this. We just write, oops, dx like that. It's just, it's, it's a new way of writing um, just a column vector. DX. And the way that we notate, sorry, the way that we notate a row vector, dx mu, is we just flip it around. We have dx like that. So again, this is just simply how we wrote, write a uh, row vector.
And then, really, eta is eta. We don't have to write anything differently. So what we get out here for, for quantum mechanics, the quantum mechanics version of this, would be, um, they would write it as ds squared. Now in quantum mechanics, turns out that you end up having to use uh, imaginary numbers, so you need to take the absolute, uh, absolute magnitude of it uh, to be entirely clear. You'll always get out a real value. But uh, quantum mechanically, the way we write that is we'll start from the right. We take our column vector dx. We're going to act on it with our Minkowski metric, which we have to you know just take the place in 4D here. Let's see, eta. And then we take that guy there, dx. And there's a name for this notation. This is um, D Dirac uh, developed this. It's, it's called Dirac uh, bracket notation or bra ket notation. We'll get more on that later. But it's kind of like we're taking two arrows and sandwiching them together, and that spits out our answer. And we'll see a whole lot of this in quantum mechanics. Uh, Paul Adrian Maurice Dirac, a, a great um, uh, experimental physicist and theoretical. So uh, this is how we would write that exact same notation here, you quantum mechanically. And then the last thing I was mentioned, you can write this using tensors in what's called Einstein notation. Um, I think, if anything, I'll just record a video again at some later time about that because it's interesting but not, I think, worth uh, spending much more time on today here. So. The, okay, so and then finally, the last, the last I wanted to get into is some of the, the basic equations of relativistic uh, dynamics, uh, how mass and momentum transform. So I'm going to erase the board here.